Can you use your mixing techniques that you use in stereo into Dolby Atmos? In this video, we're gonna take a look at beds, objects, and so much more. This is Alex Pro Mix. Let's go. Hey everyone and welcome back to Alex Pro Mix, your favorite channel on YouTube for mixing and mastering. My name is Alex Solano and I am your host. If this is your first time watching, this channel is created for you, the artist, the producer, and the engineer. In this video, I'm going to talk about beds versus objects using Dolby Atmos and what techniques you can use that are new to mixing and surround sound for enhancing your music. Let's jump right in. For this demonstration, I'm using a song produced by Isaac D from Chennai, India, and a female artist called Jennifer Faith out of the UK. It's a lovely song called My Beloved, and I'll play a little bit for you guys. Here we go. So that's a little bit of the track. It's a lovely song. The arrangement, the vocal performance is just absolutely great. So let's jump into the mix. All right, so as you can tell, this is a Pro Tools session. We have tracks, we have buses, and then on the side, we actually have the Dolby Atmos render. We're routing everything from Pro Tools into our renderer, and I'm assigning specific channels to different phases of the 3D image. So let's talk about that first. Now, you might be wondering, hey, can I use stereo plugins and mono plugins when mixing in Dolby? Absolutely. In fact, my workflow currently is to get the song sounding good in stereo. And once I'm at the 90% point where I feel like, all right, let me take this all the way, then I start splitting objects or splitting tracks and putting them around the listener. So let me show you how I did that. All right, so first of all, you have to understand that uh, any session can be translated from stereo to Dolby Atmos, but you definitely have to organize yourselves here. Now, what I'm doing is I'm routing all these channels to specific buses, okay? And these buses are down here on these red tracks. So here we have what's called a front aux, center aux. So front aux would be representative of stereo left and right speakers. Center aux would be a center speaker. Side front aux would be front corner speakers. Side back aux would be uh, side back speakers and rear aux would be speakers behind me. That's called a 9.1 setup. Then you have the ceiling locations, which is high front aux, high center aux, and high rear aux. So whenever I assign anything to these um, buses, like a reverb, it's being sent to this 3D space. If you're listening to this demonstration on headphones, you're able to hear the binaural mix. Let's just take the drum snare, all right? So I'm gonna take the drum snare, and you'll hear the snare bouncing off the reverb, and the re reverb is being sent to all these different locations. Here we go. All right, so when this turns yellow, that shows you the location of the snare, but all these other dots here are representative of the reverb return. So that's just a quick layout of how everything's routed. Now let's take a look at the mix. All right, so first of all, let's start off with the vocals because the vocal performance on this, as I mentioned, is just absolutely spectacular. This is Jennifer. If I unfreeze these tracks, you guys are gonna see the processing that I did. Now, typically now I like to freeze tracks to save on processing and allow me the affordability of using surround reverbs and everything else. And I usually like to freeze tracks once I get the tone balance of the song. Once I have the tone that I like on the song, I freeze the tracks and then I just work with the faders and the sense. All right, so let's take a look at the lead vocal. The lead vocal is basically one track for this performer, which is right here. So we're gonna go blow that up. There it is. Straight through, one performance. We got Melodyne in certain spots. Um, 
I don't know if you guys know, but I'm a Melodyne geek. I take bad sounding vocals and I make them sing. Uh, this is not the case. She was very deliberate and very good performer. So it was just a matter of fight, fine tuning those notes. That's going through Autotune Pro, slow speed, slow humanized. So it's barely touching it. And then I'm just cleaning up the audio. So basically I'm using Transient Shaper to minimize the attacks, the consonants, the transients, um, bringing down the sustain so that we eliminate some of the room noise, boosting that up by 3 dB. This is all just cleanup stuff, guys, all right? A de and an EQ, all right? Not doing a whole lot. Now this track right here gets sent to three auxiliary returns, vocal tone one, vocal tone two, and vocal tone three. My approach for mixing the song is that I wanted to give the purity of the vocal tone present throughout the mix while still making the mix sound commercial and pop. So vocal tone one is consistent, consisted of the CL1B, vocal tone two is the CLA2A, which I love the tone of, and vocal tone three is the Abbey Road Studios RS124. By combining these three faders, I'm able to mix and match the tone of her voice. These three auxiliary sends or returns are going to this main channel, which is called Jennifer Main. And on that main channel, I'm using a de EQ to make the voice a little bit more detailed sounding, uh, some sly, you know, uh, EQ cuts on the high mids, ML4000 to control the mids, and lastly, another de -esser. So the whole vocal chain sounds like this. Here we go, let's check it out. Creation sings of your love and grace Single word but think galaxies all around When you call All of creation's run to you Yet when I call You leave everything behind Just to be with me And that is just an absolute amazing sounding vocal tone. Now, up to this point, I'm not thinking of surround sound mixing. I'm not thinking of 3D audio. I'm just basically doing what I typically would do with any mix, which is let's clean it up. Let's get the tone right. Once we get the tone right, let's start experimenting and playing around with some effects. So for example, at the end of this passage right here, which is basically verse two going into the chorus, she sings this part right here, which I'll solo. And you show up, oh yeah. So I took that last phrase and I put it through a different track using a slap delay setting. And here is where I start playing around with spatial audio. Because that return or that vocal effect is not coming back on the front aux, it's not coming through our main speakers. In fact, this is going through an object, object 65 and 66. And what that basically means is that I'm taking that voice or that track out of the music bed and I'm putting it in a very distinct location. And here you can see by the panners that it's being panned all the way to the back. So if I play that by itself, you guys can hear it. It's gonna sound like this. So as you can tell, it's delayed. It sounds a little bit muffled. Now, when you combine that with the main voice, you get this type of effect, watch. And you show up, oh yeah. Who am I? So you get the main voice, you get some echoes and effects, but then all of a sudden you get this delayed response or delay echo coming behind you. And that's where you start placing objects around the 3D environment. So that's just one very simple example. Let's take a look at something else here. There is a snare buildup here into the bridge. Let me go ahead and play that for you guys so you guys can get an idea of the song arrangement. This is one of my favorite parts in the song. You are most beautiful, the holy of all. You are my dearest friend, the glorious of all. Your love captivates my soul every day. Every single day I grow more in love, Lord. You are most beautiful, the holy All right, so we have this drum buildup right here, and the original arrangement sounded like this. where you get the snare buildup. So I had an idea. What if I took that snare fill or that snare buildup, echoed it and put it behind me? And now all of a sudden I'm getting like the snare dancing or the snare 
you know, marching, dancing in front of me and behind me. And I did exactly that. I took the snare track, which was here, which is just on this build up right here. I put it on a separate track, put a delay on it, put EQ on it. But now I also sent that to a separate object, stereo object, and pan that behind me. So together, the front snare and the rear snare sound like this. So as the song is building up, I want to build up more tension and more interest. I'm taking instruments, putting them in front of me. I'm taking echoes of those instruments and putting them behind me around the listener. I did the same thing with the electric guitar where there is a strum right here in this part of the song. Let me go ahead and play that for you guys. So I took that last strum, put it on a separate track, EQ'd it and delayed it and put it behind me where it looks like that and it sounds like this. If you're hearing on headphones, it sounds more mono, it's behind you, it's darker, it's further away. So combined together, you're gonna get this type of effect. Check it out. I love that. I absolutely love that. So being able to place instruments in specific locations around the listener is just so exciting and it makes for such a more creative mix. All right, enough of that. Let's go ahead and dive into the rest of the mix. So let's go ahead and take everything off solo and play from the reintro into verse two. Here we go. Okay, cool. One more thing I want to show you guys, which is this other buildup right here uh, after what I call the reprise into chorus number three that sounds like this. Okay, right there. So you have these uh, EP or basically electronic keys or roads that sound like this. Okay, and I took the very last uh, chord and I reversed it. Now, this is the oldest trick in the book, especially for electronic and pop music. So that's not new, but what's cool is that I reversed this, which sounds like this, which builds tension and build up. And I assigned that again to an object that's gonna be panned behind me. So now you get this effect of the electronic keys playing their chord progression, but all of a sudden you get this build up, this reverse chord coming behind the listener. Check it out. And that helps to build up the tension into the last chorus. Here we go. I am yours alone. Who am I loved? You're So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, picked up some mixing techniques and some of the ways that you can implement your mixes, your techniques into Dolby Atmos or into surround sound mixing. Again, my name is Alex here with Alex Pro Mix. If this is your first time watching, I'm gonna ask you to hit like, share it with somebody you know, and subscribe to my channel. Be sure to leave your feedback and comments below. Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you guys again real soon. Peace.